Hello everyone, welcome back to this Media Composer tutorial. This is part two of Avid for Beginners. If you're completely new to Avid Media Composer and you haven't watched part one yet, I can highly recommend to do that, just so that you have a basic understanding of the general interface and know the most simple tools in your timeline. Today we want to continue working in our timeline, we want to edit a little more, we want to dive deeper into editing techniques, how to move things around in your timeline, more about working with init outpoints, dissolves, very basic effects, and so on. Okay. First of all, it's important for you to know that whenever you use your Z or X key, so the extract or lift button, whatever you have marked within and out is going to be saved in your clipboard monitor. You can open that by going to tools and here it is clipboard monitor. Here you can see the clip that I just extracted from my timeline. You can play back the clip, you can even toggle into the clip. Unfortunately, at the moment you can't dock the clipboard monitor to your interface. So if I toggle in my timeline, you won't see it anymore. I usually have it on the second screen. I'm just gonna make some space for it temporarily here. So you can shuttle around in here. At any time you can switch to your source monitor over here. I'm just gonna load something else really quick with match frame so you see the difference. Here I'm toggling my source monitor. If I click on my clipboard monitor, I'm toggling my clipboard monitor. And from here, you can use whatever you have in here and with V or B on your keyboard, move it into your timeline. That doesn't only work with one clip. So let's say I'm getting rid of half of my sequence here and out. I'm using X. Then you can see as soon as I press X, I can find the content in my clipboard monitor. And I could just put it right back where it was. Or something that I'm using more than the clipboard monitor is the source monitor. You can use the source monitor in a similar way. So instead of just pressing the X button to extract something, you can press Alt or Option X. That doesn't only extract the clip from your sequence, but it also moves it into the source monitor. Let's just go a step back and mark several clips with in and out. Press Option or Alt X. And you have everything that you deleted in your timeline now in your source monitor. That is how I work most of the time. Whenever I'm moving anything around, I'm just moving it into my source monitor and then put it back somewhere else in my timeline. Of course, this doesn't only work with the X extract key, it also works with Z, the lift key. So if I want to lift these two clips here, I press Option or Alt Z. Now I have the gap here in my sequence. I can move my cursor somewhere else. I have my clips in my source monitor here and I can insert them wherever I want to. Or of course I could make a subsequence by just dragging and dropping the sequence icon into my bin. Or you can just move your mouse anywhere within your source monitor preview window here and then drag and drop from here into your bin. So remember, whenever you use X or Z in your timeline, you'll find whatever you extracted or lifted in your clipboard monitor. But as soon as you use X or Z again, it's gone and the new clip or clips are going to be in here. So this is really just a temporary place. I think it's a great way to work, to move things around. You don't really have to create subsequences if you know you're just deleting a clip in one place and inserting it in another. If you've worked with several clips, you can always step into your clipboard monitor and then just select whatever you need. Jump back into your timeline and insert the clip. Another good thing to know is how do you properly insert clips from, for example, your source monitor into your timeline. There are different ways of using your in and out depending on what you need. So for example, let's say we want to exchange the stay shot in our sequence with this night shot in our source monitor. In order to replace this clip with this clip, you need to know where's your starting point within your clip in your source monitor, where is your starting point within your clip in your sequence, and where are your out points. So if you're just going to select your clip within and out, with in this case I use T in your sequence, and you're using in and out in your source monitor, and you now press B, 
The first frame in your sequence is the first frame of your endpoint in your source monitor. The last frame in your sequence depends on how long the clip in your sequence is. So if you use in and out in your source monitor and in your sequence, your endpoint matches your source monitor, your out point is whatever duration the clip in your sequence is. I'm going to give you a couple examples. Let's create a new track with command Y. If I'm not setting any in and out points in my source monitor, Avid is going to use our green cursor here as the in point. So let's just leave it right here. We know this is our in point. And we now set in and out in our timeline. Avid is going to use this frame as the in point. And it's going to insert three seconds and 10 frames starting from here. This number here between those monitors is showing you the, the duration of your in and out points. So in this case, the first clip wasn't long enough. So ever just continued with whatever comes next in your source monitor. If you're not setting any in and out points, Avid is just going to use everything in your source monitor. But sometimes you know what frame you want to end the clip with, but you don't care too much about where your clip starts in your timeline. Let's just match frame this clip here, for example, and say you want your clip to end with this motion of the car right over here. In that case, I would get rid of all in and out points and only set my out point right here. And if I want to replace this clip here, I would set both in and out points. Avid is now going to use only your out point. So this frame is going to be the last frame in this section here. If you now press B, you can see your last frame matches the out point of your source monitor. And the in point is two seconds, 17 frames earlier from your out point. I really like working with in and out points. Once you understand the idea behind it, it's really easy to swap things out. I often even only set an in point or an out point in my source monitor. If you feel a little insecure about your in and out points, you can go to your settings under file and settings. In your user settings, under Composer, you can go to Edit and select Phantom Marks. Okay, if you get rid of your in and out points with G, you can see that Avid shows you where your in and your out points would be if you don't set them manually. That makes it really obvious at any time where your clip is going to start and end if you insert it into the timeline. As soon as you select a clip in your timeline, you can see that your phantom marks are changing depending on, on what and how much you're selecting in your timeline. If there's a big gap in your sequence or you're at the end of your sequence, your out point will always be the end of the clip in your source monitor. Another really good tool in your timeline is the blue insert error. You can find that under tools, command palette. And here under edit, it's called replace edit. Let's just put that right here for now. I made a whole video about this little tool, but I'm just gonna show you the idea of it really quick. It's really useful. If you have a cut like this one, for example, where your audio starts before your video, in this case, you can choose your picture input in your source monitor. I don't have to set an in point because the green cursor is my in point. And you go to the first frame of your sequence in point, you select the video and audio tracks you want to replace and just click this button here. And now both video and audio tracks have been replaced. That's a little easier, I think, than marking in and out points and then trimming your audio back. So I can recommend to play around with that as well. I think I've mentioned how to add dissolves in my last video by using the slash key on the American keyboard. This works for audio and video, but I forgot to mention something and people have asked about that. You can of course set several dissolves for several cuts. So let's say you have a lot of audio clips on a couple of tracks and you want to add the same dissolve for all your audio clips here 
can just set an in and out point for the whole range, go to your first cut, go to quick transition. Let's say you want five frames for all cuts. And here you can select apply to all transitions in and out. You can even skip existing transitions. We already have a couple of them here. We don't want to change them. So that's a nice bonus as well. We click on add and all your cuts have the five frame transition now, except for the ones that have been there before. And of course it works for video as well. Not sure who would add a bunch of transitions on the video track at the same time, but it does work. Another thing I want to show you are very basic video effects. Not so much effects, but basic tools that you can find in the effect palette. If you go to tool, you can find your effect palette over here. And I want to show you some of the very basics. In most cases, you find what you are looking for under image. Because what you are looking for often is the resize effect. That is not really an effect. It is what you find, for example, in Adobe Premiere. If you're going to effects editor, those parameters are there already as a standard. In Avid, you can just drag and drop this on your clip, select your video track and go to your effects editor. So the resize effect, for example, is giving you very basic scaling options, position options and crop options. And from here, if you do decide you need more than just the basics, at any time you can promote a resize effect by clicking on the little 3D button here. And you now have a 3D warp effect that is basically the big brother of the resize effect. There are a lot more options. It is one of the most important effects in Avid to know. You can do a lot with it. I don't want to show you every single option here. I can recommend to really play around with it so that you know what all of this is. But basically you can move and warp your image around with it in every possible direction. Over here you can zoom in and out your program monitor. And with these tools on the right side here, you can grab your picture and do all kinds of crazy things with it. You have a key tool included a focus tool, tracking tools. So whenever you want to modify your picture in any way, the three warp is probably the effect you want to use. You can set keyframes for all your effects. And this is probably one of the most important things to know about this effect. If you, for example, want to work with two different video layers, let's just use this clip over here and this clip on top of it. If you use the resize effect and you're cropping one side, you only see black, you don't see the other video layer. You can change the color here, but that doesn't help you if you want to see the other video layer. So for something like that, you would have to use the 3D warp. We can just promote it in this case again and deselect background color. That way you can see the video layer under it. If you want to use the 3D warp effect right away, you can find it under blend. Here it is 3D warp. At any time you can step into your effects by selecting the video track and using the little step in button. Now you're under your 3D warp effect. So in this case, I could, for example, use the superimpose. This is basically just the opacity of the video track. Move this under the 3D warp and then step out again. And now I have something like this. I could do that as well in the 3D warp effect, but I just want to demonstrate here how you can stack effects on top of each other. I have mapped all of those keys, like the effects editor, the step in and out on my keyboard. So I can really quickly navigate through here, modify things and get the job done a little bit faster. Another way of stepping into an effect is by just double clicking on it. That way you can see the layers under them. For some reason they are on top, so it's kind of the opposite order, but this would be another easy way of selecting a video track and then modifying the effect. Another way of stacking effects on top of each other is by grabbing it here, moving on your clip and now hold down the Alt or Option key. That way this blur effect, for example, here is on top of all the other effects. If you just drag and drop it on top of it without holding Alt or Option, you're overriding your latest effect. 
So be careful when there are effects applied already. Don't just put another effect on there. Always hold down the Alt or Option key. There are a whole bunch of other effects like those flip and flip-flop effects. There's a stabilizer you can apply. There's a paint effect that is really good for all kinds of things. It's, it lets you draw shapes and modify them in interesting ways. I definitely also recommend to play around with the effect palette. That is the only way of really getting familiar with it. Don't be scared of it. Just practice and try to modify them in the most extreme ways possible. That way you really learn how they work. I don't want this to become an effects video, so these are just the very basic effects. If you are interested in more complex effects and compositions, feel free to mention this in the comment section. If this video was helpful, feel free to use the link in the video description for a donation. I would really appreciate that. Check out my other videos as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.